Hello and welcome to a millinery history video. My name is Ilona, I am a milliner based in London and today I'm following up on a few names of milliners associated with Balenciaga's hats. Last week I reviewed the exhibition titled Balenciaga, the elegance of the hat. If you haven't seen that video, I'll pop it in a card right up here. In one of the essays in the catalogue, it named some milliners who were associated with designing alongside or for Balenciaga, and I thought we should learn a little bit more about them. It would be too complicated if I did a comprehensive bibliography on each of them, so instead I wanted to look at some of their hats. I don't want to anger the copyright gods by showing you all their work in pictures, so I thought I'd draw them for you instead. I find that drawing hats, rather than just looking at pictures, can give you a different perspective. Drawing is also a meditative process and allows your brain time to think about the materials and techniques that you see in the photograph. So grab your favourite art supplies and let's get started. I'm only doing rough fashion sketches today, so for this I'm going to be using alcohol markers by Winsor & Newton and Ohuhu. If I was doing a final fashion illustration, I'd probably get out my gouache and watercolours. I've also got my fashion croquis heads ready. This makes it really easy to sketch out ideas super fast. If you'd like a set of these, you'll be able to purchase a digital download of them from my website shortly. I'll update the description box below with links once that's up and running. Maria Oscaris oversaw the millinery department at the Madrid Aiza Salon. She learnt millinery from her mother. Designs were sent to her directly from Paris and she had to interpret them. She kept her own sketches of the collections in her notebook, which is where I'm drawing from today. Maria opened up her own millinery business at the same time as supervising the salon at Aiza. I will leave a link to the original image that I'm copying in the description box below. So if you want to have a look and have a go yourself and follow along, then feel free to do that. It starts off with a little lip over here that doesn't look like it goes all the way around the head. It looks like it's kind of sitting on her head over here. Quite common in late 40s hats. And then the hat itself is this kind of round, round plate shape and then we go over the top and I'm not gonna I'm trying to not make it too big or too tall I may have gone too tall and then it's got what looks like this poof on top of it so let's draw the poof actually I won't draw it too much because I am going to rub out most of my lines the lucky thing about this hat is that we are given a description of potentially what it looked like. So let's rub out most of my pencil lines because alcohol markers will kind of trap the pencil and we don't want that. So as long as most of the pencil's gone, that'll be fine. I'm gonna make it pink because I think gray is boring to look at. I know Balenciaga would have probably made it gray because he liked black so much, but I like pink and this is my drawing. If we're going for tool, I want to make it look nice and wispy. I'm going to use the alcohol marker in a similar direction to what I would imagine the tool to be placed on the hat in. I'm trying to leave a little bit of white just to have that shining through, or maybe not. Let's work on the base. Even though the drawing says black, I'm actually going to use a dark grey with the brush tip this time. Here's the first problem with my choice of media. It's bleeding a little bit, but never mind, we'll, we'll sort that out with some fine liner later. There it is. That's the little lip that this hat is sitting on. Because this is just a quick illustration to help me visualize how I might make it, I'm not gonna bother being too true on the colors. So even though the black would probably show through, I'll just leave it at that. And now we've gotta make it look a bit fluffier, a bit more tool-like. So I'm gonna grab my pencil, and this is a 2B pencil, slightly on the harder side than the 4B I was drawing with earlier. I'm gonna add in these fabric drapes. That looks quite fluffy. And then we've got the jet pearls. If I was just looking at the image, I probably wouldn't interpret them as jet pearls, but I'm guessing they're hat pins. 
I would have interpreted these as like two cornflowers or something just plonked on top. But we've got the description, we're being true to the description. So, jet pearls it is. Jet would be black. And I'm gonna carry on with the grey for now because I don't want to overpower the image with black elements. Pearls have a bit of a shine. I'm gonna add a little bit of highlight with a white corrector pen. Let's just test that over here. Okay. Just a little, whoop, hardly pressing at all. And I'll come back in with my pink marker just to add a bit of depth. So I think this kind of looks like it's going up. Give that some depth over here. And then there's a bit of, and then just, I'm going to line it to keep in with the wispy look. I'm not going to line the entire outline. I'm just gonna do, the various bits of shape. It's important to not overdo these. I have a tendency to overdo these. And one last line, one last line. No, one more, one more, one more. Did I overdo it? Did I overdo it? No, one more, one more, one more. There we go. I must stop, put the pens down. Ooh, the lady, in the drawing is wearing an earring, so let's give this lady an earring. What colour should we go with? Let's give her a nice purple earring. And then I always like my ladies to have lipstick. Let's try a pastel rose, just ever so gently on there. Maybe we should match the earring to the lipstick. Just add a little suggestion of nose. There we go. There's my finished drawing. Now, the important thing to do is to label it. So whatever today's date is, I'm filming this on a different day to when this video goes out. And then this isn't my design, so I'm not gonna label it like it was my design. I'm going to very clearly label it whose design it was. And that is Maria Oscaras. So let's just write that over here. There we go. That's the first drawing. Madame Helene was the supervisor for Balenciaga's Paris Atelier from 1941 to 1960. I'm going to draw a hat from a selection of sketches from her salon. My reference image has a whole collection of hats drawn out, some of which have initials of models next to them. I think this must have been part of the deliberation process of who was to wear what for a show. Let's start by sketching the general shape. It's perching on her, so I'd say it's a pillbox shape rather than a toque. You know, it struck me yesterday that a toque and a pillbox it's essentially the same thing, but one is head size and the other isn't. And I'm very pleased with that revelation. And then there's gonna be a thing over here. And that is where this fabulous swathe of fabric comes out. Once again, I'm gonna link the original image in the description box. This is a bow. This is the end bit of bow, and then this is a loop that goes like that. And then I think this is a loop that goes like that. Hmm, I don't actually like it as, as such big loops. I'm gonna make them slightly smaller. See, this is my interpretation, so I don't have to be exact. Add maybe a little bit more height to it. A bit lower onto her ear. It's definitely sitting above her ear, and her ear would be somewhere here. Oh, and more of a swoosh down here. See, the more I'm refining the shape, the more I realize how this hat should sit on the head. Now I'm at the stage where I can start coloring in, so I'm actually going to go ahead and remove most of my pencil lines. I'm gonna remove the ear as well, because I think that's just distracting. That was just a construction line. This image doesn't come with the color description or anything, so I'm just going to make it up. And I'm gonna make it my favorite fabric color, which is green. What I've got here are some color swatches from my markers, so I can pick exactly which color I want. And I'm gonna go for the emerald green for my main color, and then I'm gonna use the turquoise green as a shadow color. Start with the lighter color first. It's got this top flat a bit, which is what makes me think that it's a pillbox, because it's definitely got that flat edge. And then this edge here has got some fabric folds in it, which tells me that it's draped fabric, probably in the same way that this turban is, where I've got the central piece of fabric here, and then I've got my side covering there. In fact, I've got some green silk. Maybe we can make a turban like this. L let me know in the comments if you wanna see how I 
work with that kind of fabric style. The bow, so that's got a bit of a sharper edge because that's definitely my edge piece. And then I've got some bits here that are definitely the loops. Oh, this was my darker color. That was silly of me. Right, let's see if I can salvage this. I should be able to just blend that in. Blend, blend, blend. Make sure the outline is blended. Blend, blend, blend. What I really like about these markers is the brush tip. It makes it so easy to just fill in vast swathes of color. Do you know, the camera's making it look really dark, but it's, it's not that dark. Here's the darker color now. So let's go in and add some of those fabric drape folds. And let's just add a bit of shadow on this bottom edge. Bit of shadow up here leading into the bow. So let's now carry on and add in a bit more of the folds. There, there they go, and a bit more over here. Right, that's that definitely looks drapey now. That's enough. So let's give her a matching earring in the darker green. We should also give her some lips. Let's go for a slightly orangey lip color to complement the green. Either the vermilion, well that, oh, that's too bright. The orange is too orange. Well, I guess we'll just go with the rose beige again. Mm -mm. There we go. And this is my favorite bit, the suggestion of nose. Stunning. Okay. Enough, I'm putting the pens down. Right, label it just like we did with the other one. So, Madame Helene hat. Isn't it stunning? Lovely. Hello, my millinery friends. Tiger and I have been very busy decorating His Majesty's bedroom over here this week. So you'll have to join me next week for the illustrations of hats by Velazzo de Attenville, Adolfo Sardinia and Le Grue Sur. See you next time. Bye. Say bye-bye, Tiger. Say bye-bye. Oh, sweetheart.